Hi, my name is Jason Croft. I am the chef and the kitchen manager over here at the Irish Bread Pub in downtown Douglasville. Today I'm going to show you a traditional Irish favorite that uh, people around here have really opened up to. It's traditional corned beef and cabbage. First off is uh, we use our the secret ingredient is uh, we marinate it and it cooks in beer. Of course all the Irish people are saying yes, that's what they want. Uh, we cook it in Smithix. It's a traditional, traditional Irish ale, it's a dark ale. And we usually put a pitcher of that in. And it allows, when it cooks, it also will color the meat a little bit. It give it that uh, flavor, but also give it a nice dark color for it. Also, we'll add to it, we'll add celery. Now, what celery does is like any traditional pot roast, it'll give it a uh, flavor, but with the corned beef, it's a pickled beef. So it adds a really nice touch to it. And the difference between a corned beef and a beef brisket is the fat, and that is pickled. It's a pickled beef, and it has a lot of fat layered up on the top. When you cook it, the fat allows for it to stay moist and juicy, also for it to fall apart. Also, it gives it a really terrific flavor. We start with the corned beef. We'll turn the corned beef over on the back side of it and leave the fat on the bottom. And then we'll take some uh, steak seasoning. It's got ground peppercorn, garlic, salt, pepper. And all we'll do is we'll cover the bottom of it nice and evenly. Then we will place it in the pan, brine. We're going to lay it with the fat side up to allow when it cooks the fat to drip in. And then we'll go cover the top with the same thing. And then the other spice, the seasoning that we will use is a, uh, a dill seasoning. It's got capers, dill, a lot of things. What they use when they uh, dill pickles and things, we'll place that over the top of the meat. And that's where you get that distinct flavor that is called, you know, corned beef. Very acquired taste. Uh, out of these two corned beef, these are, right now we have about 25 pounds of corned beef right now. We'll get about 15 to 20 servings out of it. Because we're here all about giving big portions here at the pub. We're, we want you to get your bang for your buck. We're not trying to starve you to death as you would any gourmet restaurant. Next, what we'll do is we'll take plastic wrap and seal it up really tight. And the reason for the plastic wrap is only why it's cooking in the oven, it also will steam it. It will allow all the, all the moisture and stuff to stay in of it, so where you get more, more of the juices and stuff to stay in, they don't cook out. Then we'll seal it with aluminum foil on that top layer. Really tight. You do not want you don't want none of the heat, steam, anything to escape out of it. Well after we wrap this and everything, we're gonna put this in the preheated oven at 325 degrees. We're gonna let it cook for four, four and a half hours till it reaches a temperature of about 160, 165 degrees. Once we put these in the oven, next I'm gonna show you how we do the, the cabbage and the red bliss potatoes to what uh, to complement the rest of this dish and to where you get our traditional corned beef and cabbage. Next up on the corned beef and cabbage, we're going to show y'all how we do the, the red bliss potatoes and the cabbage, which is really simple and doesn't take no time to do. First off, we're going to make a stock, chicken stock, using a uh, culinary chicken base. It's a lot simpler than boiling the chicken for about 45 minutes, getting the stock, draining it, you know, taking all the bones out. So we'll do about two tablespoons of it. So on the red bliss potato, make sure you wash them first. But uh, take them, and all we do is you cut them in half. Allows when we put them on the plate, allows for a greater plate presentation. Makes them take a little bit longer to cook, but like I said, we're at the pub, we're here for bigger portions, not larger prices. 
with our with ours, we like using a little red onion to give it that little bit of a kick to it. And last but not least, we add uh, chicken seasoning, Montreal chicken seasoning, over the top. And that's the it. We'll let them cook on medium heat for about 45 minutes till they're not quite done all the way to where they're soft enough to uh, eat. And then with cabbage, what you want to do is you got the core running through it like you do on a uh, lettuce head iceberg. If you cut down the middle, Right here's the core, that the uh, hard stem. All you do is just cut that out, go around it, and cut it out. Then you can cut cabbage pretty much any type of way you want to. We just prefer to just quarter it. Then the last thing we'll add is some more chicken seasoning to help that chicken stop. Potatoes and the cabbage are now cooking. They'll cook for about 45 minutes until you don't want them to be overdone. You want to make sure the potatoes are soft enough but still hard enough to stay firm. So while those are cooked, let's go get our corned beef out and let's show the end product of it. All right, now we're going to check on our corned beef to make sure it's right. So we're going to cut it open. To reveal the product. Then we're going to check the temperature of it. We're going to make sure that it's at the right temp to be fully done. 160 degrees is what we're trying to shoot at for that. Between 155 and 160. And it's at 165, so it's perfect. So now we're going to remove the corned beef, slice it up, and uh, get ready to show you the presentation of it. Corn beef, as you can see, still the corn beef has a lot of fat on it. And that's just because it's a pickled beef, but also it keeps the moisture in. So when you cook it, you don't get that dry shoe leather type meat, you know, like a football. You want to make sure it maintains that moisture. So we'll slice it in about quarter inch slices. But as you can see, how it runs is nice, uh, juicy. No knife needed for this. Then we're going to place it in one of our pans so that it'll stay nice and hot. Then one of the final things, just so that we can keep the meat, so when we do keep it hot and ready to serve, that it doesn't dry out during the whole time, is we take the leftover juices and the uh, marinade that we cooked it in, and we just place it over the top. Also, that'll allow it to still keep its flavor, but at the same time, keep it moist. All right, now let's find out if our cabbage and potatoes are done. And looking at it right here, ah oh yes, perfect, perfect, all ready. Looking nice, and as the potatoes, as you can see, they are not, they're soft, but they're not too soft. They're not like mashed potatoes, and that's the way you, you don't want them like mashed potatoes. So let's plate it up and show you what our corned beef and cabbage is. First, we'll start off, with our cabbage. Then we'll do it with the potatoes. Give it that nice full presentation. 
then we will do our corned beef. We'll take two, and we'll just layer it. Right over the top like that. All right, here's our corned beef and cabbage. Nice full plate presentation. That's a lot of food to eat for the money that you get. Well, there's the finished product. I really did enjoy showing y'all today how we made this, and I don't know if I do say so myself, that smells awful good. I think I'm hungry right now. This is our corned beef and cabbage, as you can see. Terrific dish. We have it every Wednesday night on our uh, Irish night, St. Practice night, uh, which is the 17th of every month. Come out, we'll have it. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I think I'm eating some of this corned beef. Thank you for allowing me to show you our dish today and look forward to seeing you at the pub soon.